Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I just spent all day taking this old 6.5 Detroit out of my mail truck because a Cummins 5.9 12 valve is about to go in. If you want to see what happens with this build, subscribe and like the video and donate down below so we can get it done faster. Here's how it goes. Day two of the Cummins swap. I think I'll be able to get the motor out today by myself. Don't see why not. Somebody asked me in the comments if I really thought I was gonna be able to do this by myself. Well, yeah, of course. I've done a lot of stuff like this by myself. I don't have anything but time and a mind to solve problems. So this is gonna be a fun project for me. Today, I'm most interested in, again, removing the engine and uh, just getting some plans going on. So I'm gonna take everything off the front of the engine, the uh, conversion kit that I have. allows me to use all of my original components which is why i went for the conversion kit instead of buying a different vehicle like buying an old truck that has a cummins in it this will this has a bunch of different adapter plates for my alternator and stuff so i don't have to change anything over accessory wise just real quick i was looking at everything here and i remembered when i saw this windshield washer reservoir that the windshield washer fluid actually comes out in a little spray nozzle right here and it just sprays in front of the wipers as they spray it's super cool i've never seen that before and that's my favorite part about the ups truck on my channel where everybody can see you yeah. okay do you want to tell us what's going on with the project yeah. okay clementine if you don't want to be in the video please go that way if you don't want to be on camera no. you want to be on it be on it. okay go ahead and tell us what? This is the biggest ranch I ever seen. And if you want, you can join us if you want to see our real side rescue video. That's a job, job well done. That is a job well done. Thank you, buddy. That was great. So with that, let's start removing accessories here. Let's see which way we gotta go for this. Let's this belt tensioner here, there it goes. This belt, other than the oil, is the only thing I've ever... All right, I'm gonna pause the video real quick right here. If you look at this belt tensioner, it's missing a bolt. I'll find that out later on, but I don't know if I have good video evidence of that beforehand. So just see right here, that belt tensioner is missing its bolt. No, never mind. I don't know what I was gonna say that I put a couple of different things on this truck. I was gonna say I only ever had to worry about this belt. When I bought it, the belt was squeaking. That was the only thing I that was wrong with it when I bought it. That's not the right word either because there was other things wrong with it. That was the only thing I knew that was wrong with it when I bought it. Get the rest of that water out of the engine. Put the water pump there. There's nothing worse when you think you've got everything drained out of your engine and then you go and put it on a stand or something and another gallon of oil or coolant comes pouring out. So good thing we caught that because I was not expecting this much. Dang, we were like seconds from catastrophic failure anyways. I did not take the bolt out of this and this just fell off. So that was just dangling around on there for who knows how long. I probably could have replaced the tensioner when I replaced the bell, but you know me, I was probably too cheap to do that. I didn't even check that bolt, dang, that was close. All right, well, I just got this, this fan clutch removal kit on here, but this thing's like, the holes aren't exactly square, so I'm having the hardest time 
getting this hooked on. I don't want to ruin this belt, but I'm thinking I might just have to wrap this around the pulley and around another pulley and vice grip it off so that it won't spin. Maybe the only way I'm getting this off right now. I've got a pipe wrench. I may just hook around this main pulley as well though. So I'm not interested in reusing the water pump. And I am everything else. Let's try that. Never mind. I thought I had a bigger pipe wrench than I actually do then. Well, let's just get going with everything else and leave that fan alone for right now. I'm not too interested in dealing with it. You know what? Since I don't care, I'm going to just grab that pulley with a pair of vice grips and la and lean it on something while I break that loose. I would never do that with like a water pump I was going to reuse because it's going to mess up the pulley, but so I'm not using that one. Oh, this might be the tool I need right here. Yeah, that'll fit. Perfect. That's awesome. That's literally the last chain link too. Now I can go a couple more. on there now I should be able to smack that loose with my bingo is this the one I was using this looks a lot bigger on the ground okay I'm pretty sure that's the right direction since the span normally fins that way fins that way spins that way find out by trying both directions. Uh, got the very corner of my pinky. Like right there, yep, gonna be a blood blister. Ouch. See right there. Ah, it's not stopping. Still stings. Oh, it still stings. But hey, I broke it loose. That's the important thing I was trying to do. It took me way too long. I have like half an hour trying to figure out how to do that. Should've just got those chain pliers. There you go. And clutch. Cool, that looks a lot better. You can see things without that fan there and deal with everything. Ooh. Great tool. Ouch, man, my pinky hurts. Look at that. Mm. Still stings. Still stings. I think. gonna say something about the hoses needing to be reused or something like that so I don't want to mess these hoses up at least real nice hose clamps uh, this was not turbocharged so I'm gonna have to do that but I've got a MIG welder on the way so we should be able to fabricate some exhaust system for that and too worried about it all right hose see I'm putting some stuff in the back of my truck and some stuff over there I have a couple of extra shelves from the back of the truck here so if I need like aluminum plating or anything uh, particularly I already have one idea but I have two of those shelves and two little ones here so plenty of aluminum to make some to make some stuff but particularly I want to make like a metal plate right here that goes over the ABS system right here. I don't know what that is. What is this 
pulley attached to. Is it just a pulley? Because there's something underneath there. Well, that might be internal. Well, I feel like that's spinning something, huh? What's that? Like a power steering pump looking. Okay, we'll have to investigate that. It's interesting. This like soundproofing stuff is so heavy. You wouldn't expect it to be this heavy, so it probably weighs the truck down a ton, but it's also like really not durable. It's just so fragile, and this foam stuff's just turned into dust. Nasty stuff, I'm gonna get rid of all that. I don't think I care about soundproofing it. I'm putting in a loud engine for a reason, and it's probably gonna have loud exhaust for a reason. Mostly because it's probably cheaper to make the exhaust loud, actually. Regardless, uh, if I need to do anything like that, it's gonna be my stuff and not this stuff. Same thing with these fender liners. I'm thinking about like taking these out completely. Um, I don't have a great idea for what to do with those yet. They're functional, but I don't really care because I'm thinking about making the engine really visible. Like I'm thinking about cutting vents in the side of the hood here so that people walking around will be able to see the engine sitting in there. Somebody said they were worried about having clearance because the 5.9 is gonna be a little bit longer. I'm not worried about that. And if I need to make the front of the truck longer, I can do that, but that's a whole nother two feet right there, foot and a half, and radiator can go forward or somewhere else if we need to. Uh, but regardless, if I make that more visible, then if I take these fender wells out, maybe put some like lights in here somewhere, just subtle lighting so you can actually see, I think it might look, might look a lot better if the fender liner wasn't there, if the idea was to look in and see what's going on. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to start removing accessories. Oh, it's in the back of that. Already had it out here. Whoa, that thing's not want to come off. Fuck, like I'm just about to strip that out. All right, that worked. That was a good try because that was a little risky stripping this out but I thought I had a good chance giving it one good smack and popping it loose and I did okay old tensioner definitely going in the garbage it's already scaring me I mean I don't even have the bolt replacement for that garbage okay cool I have a pulley remover and installer kit I think I have two actually okay let me see if I can remember how to use this thing Same deal though, this has to go all the way down. All the way down. Boom, like that, okay. Now, when you loosen these in concordance with each other, the collar's grabbing that pulley and it's gonna yank it off because it doesn't have anywhere else to go. Okay.
there you go. Awesome little tool set. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Such a nice little setup too with the two different sizes fit perfectly around each other. So well thought out or just a good coincidence. Okay. Uh, I don't even know what this pulley's from. Is this from the tensioner? Yeah, that's the pulley that fell off. Okay, let me remove this stuff. And then I'll go inside and take this stuff off the top. And we'll try and disconnect motor mounts and exhaust manifold. Just kind of get this exposed down to the block as much as I want to. Or feel like I should in order to have access to everything. Or make it the easiest to pull out. Not in a rush. If this takes two days, that's fine. I'm just having fun. If I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This project has been like a dream of mine ever since I had the initial idea to have a mobile mechanic business. I wanted one of these trucks. So if I rush this, I'm afraid that I'm going to psych myself out or stress myself out about the project and I'm not going to enjoy it. So I'm going to take my time and hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. You know, it looks super not fun to replace this hose right here. Could you imagine if everything was still on this truck and this hose right here busted? That would be a nightmare to replace for such a small little hose. I do want to eventually get a 90 degree impact. It's pretty much for doing stuff like this, something I can just pop, pop, pop like a wrench. Uh, this, this will work fine with my normal impact, but it's so big. I'm going to need to get a three eighths or something. That 90 degree looks nice. So. For now, though, I think we'll just pop all these bolts loose with this because these are six point sockets. Oh, except for what do they not give us a 14 millimeter on purpose? I think it's 13. You know what, I do have to take this pulley off though and all this other stuff. Nothing's gonna be too interesting, so I think I'll just set up a time lapse. Okay, here we go. It's been about an hour and a half, two hours, and I've gotten the whole front of this motor taken apart. So I'm gonna go inside now and I'm gonna take all the stuff off the top, including even maybe down to the valve, um, the intake manifold there, not valve cover. Those can stay on um, as long as I find places to hook up to, but if I remove the intake manifold, that'll be easy. My idea is if I make the motor as small as possible before it comes out, then it's the easiest for me, a one-man job, to take it out. Same thing when I build the engine, probably just put in the short block and then add everything to it once it's already inside the frame. Expensive stuff. Please do not use this, okay? I want, I want you to roll it back up and put it up for me. Can you do that? You could maybe do like one race on it, but I, you need to put it back up. This is my work stuff and it's expensive.
All right, so I've gotten a high pressure fuel pump out just now. There it is. It might be worth a penny or two on mine, because I'm not gonna need it. Um, and obviously all the fuel lines had to come off before that. My kids have been up in, in here playing with me, so I have not um, time-lapsed this last part of just getting the fuel, fuel pump out, but exactly like you'd imagine it went, nothing crazy. Pretty much naked now. It's just a short walk. Everything else is gone. Uh, actually, there's a starter, which I brought bolts out of the bell housing here, but I have two more over there in this bracket, and then I gotta crawl on the ground to get the ones underneath. All right, it is several hours later, and I've just gotten done doing all the tedious stuff. Ooh, almost fell. Ooh, almost fell again. Um, sun in my eyes. There's a ton of like random little things. In fact, I said everything's done. I have the oil dipsticks, the only thing left connected to the engine. Uh, everything else though, wires, oil cooler lines, lines that run past the engine and connect to them just as support brackets, everything except for that oil dipstick is disconnected. I'll show you. Look right here, oil cooler lines disconnected down by the oil filter, everything here. This wires, all the glow plugs, that connector just all connected, stuck to the box, same as this. Crank signal I'm sure just goes down inside that crank case there. On this side, same thing, right here, a couple wires, but they're all stuck to the block. Down there, that wire doesn't touch the engine. So we've got motor mount, motor mount, and this right here, that has got to just come out somehow. I've replaced that before. I just don't remember if I did it from the bottom or from the top. All the bolts, except for that one's out. And even the bolts on the torque converter are undone at this point. So it's ready to come out. I'm gonna do that this uh, tonight before it gets dark and call this one very long day. Well done, so let's get that out. And then I can say that. All right. Got my cherry picker out on half ton because, man, whoever thought a Cummins might not fit in here? This thing goes deep, so it might not fit in here, but it's deeper than I thought, so I don't think I'll have a problem getting my Cummins in here. That's as far back as I can go. That's almost centered in the middle of the engine there, so with the chain, I should be able to pick it up pretty straight. In fact, I have a leveler. I might cut it with that. going to use this leveler because I think it's a little too tall. I can shorten that chain over there, but I don't think I'll need to. So I'm going to hook up a shorter chain and then I'll show you when I'm done what it looks like and then we'll pull it out together. Alright, well, we'll see if this works. Here we go, a little bit. That chain's too long on my lift arm. Shorten that real quick. All right, round three. I think this one will do it.
got it with this one. Clear that. Break this down there. Oh, we're still rolling. I'm just out here cleaning up now. It's been 27 minutes since I started trying to pull the engine. And I've been talking to my wife for about five, 10 minutes. So that was about how long it took. Oh, dang, I'm tired. I got to the point where I was, at one point I was trying to stand up and I pushed my arm down to help myself get up. And my arm was wobbling, it was so tired. So get this done and go take a break. I'm probably not gonna work tomorrow. Rev up your engines. Thanks for watching. This video was super awesome. I'm exhausted. I've been out here all day. I finally got this motor pulled. I didn't want to go inside until I got it pulled. And it's well, well past working hours. If you like this video, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Consider donating down below. Thanks to these people who donated and made this video possible. And I'll see you on the next episode. That's a job well done.